Well, hi, Stacey Peters, uh, formerly Keating. Uh, it's weird to still say that, but uh, thanks for joining me on the show tonight for a bit of a chat. Hey, thanks, Brady. Thanks for having me on. Ah, yeah, it's um, I'm kind of getting better at interviewing women. Uh, kind of my preference is guys to start with, but I think uh, girls and women obviously have a very rounded view of things, and um, it's it's great to add a bit of diversity into this show. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad. Uh, well, let's hope that I can add something for you. But, no, no, um, we're, no, we're looking forward to the chat. Yeah, definitely. So, where did golf start for you, Stacey? Where did it all begin? You're obviously a Victorian. Um, where did it begin for you? Um, well, I grew up in Western Victoria. Um, okay. I, I grew up kind of in between Colac and Ballarat, a little town sort of called Werner. There's not too much, uh, not too much there. My parents are on a um, sheep and crop farm, and then. Yeah, sort of. I didn't really play. Um, I didn't play golf until I was 12, 13. My grandparents okay. kind of got me into it. Um, but it was just another sport for me. I played a lot of tennis, a lot of netball, just sort of the country country thing to do. Got tagged along, you know, dragged along with my folks and to the tennis club, netball, football club, that sort of thing with my brothers. Um, and then, yeah, when I was 12, 13, my grandparents just sort of took me out to the Lismore Golf Club it is. It's a little nine hole track. Oh, okay. um, no bunker in no bunker in sight. Okay. Um, was it sand greens at all? Was it sand? No, proper, proper greens. Proper greens, okay. So pretty yeah. uh pretty lucky. I I uh you know, there, there's a few sand greens around us actually. Yeah. But um yeah, no, we had grass greens and um yeah, so I used to just tag along with my grandparents on a Saturday afternoon behind sort of the field. Nan would tee up every uh, every ball for me and my younger brother, Beautiful. and uh, patient lady, and yeah, I guess that's kind of I guess to answer your question, that's where it started, I guess, and then yeah, just kind of played once a week, sort of when I got into it, but it was just another yeah, like I said, another sport until I was about seventeen, eighteen when I started taking it a bit more seriously. Yeah, that's funny that I I started on a national park nine hole golf course. You hit like Dad was always very. If you hit a good shot, you got another one. That was kind of like my thing. <laughs> so it took me it took me a while to finish nine holes, but we eventually got there. Um, good deal, good deal, Dad. Yeah, good deal, Dad. Uh, so yeah, it's it's good it's good to hear you played lots of other sports. I don't think uh, some golfers can kind of get stuck on the one sport mind, and um, they miss a lot of that team aspect. I played a few other sports and did athletics leading up to my golfing career. Um, when did you decide golfers for you? Um, you know, you said you started playing at 12, 13, 16, 17, a bit more seriously. Uh, if you could talk us through that, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, I, again, like I didn't, um, I sort of had, I had no lessons or any sort of instruction until I was 18. So I probably, I'm not going to say it was, you know, serious until, until then it was when I, I moved to Melbourne for university. Yep. And sort of started having some lessons. And then I, I improved without sound and like big headed or anything, but I improved really quickly when I started having lessons. And I was off, um, I was playing off eight at the time. And then like, I just, I, I probably got to, I got to scratch maybe in a year. And yeah, so that's, geez, uh, that's a dramatic. Through, that's... through that period. Yeah. I, I, through that period was a lot of fun and very motivating for me, I guess. And it, it probably wasn't, honestly, it probably wasn't until then that I kind of thought, not that I thought it, my, my coach, uh, Stephen Giuliano at the time, yep. um, it was him that put the idea in my head of um, turning professional. Yeah. So, you know, not, I, I can't even, you know, say it was a, oh, it's always a dream or whatever. I can't, I can't sort of say that, but it was, yeah, it was him that put it in my head. And so then we kind of started working towards that. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like I, I was very similar. Like I just thought, well, I just want to get as good as I can get and see where that keeps going. You obviously climbed through the amateur ranks. I think you're a few a few years older than I was when I kind of got on the scene. I was like, well, this Stacey Keating's killing all the women stuff. Like, who is she? Oh, and I don't know the... about that, mate. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> what it seemed like. You, you know, you had a lot of lot of wins. Um, you obviously were in uh, a lot of amateur teams and represented um, a lot of highlights in that. Um, yeah, so it's it's great to see that it is it it is a weird idea to begin with, um, especially leading into professional. Like it's it's such a big jump. Um, what what was it? Just your coach that kind of pushed you into that, or where you kind of saw a result either way, and it was just like, well, I'll just go that way with it. Yeah, 
think it's probably, well, it was obviously, yeah, it was Stephen who first put the idea in my head. And I was, I, I still remember he printed out a, um, an entry form for LPGA Q school and whatever year it was then maybe I can't even do the maths, but so it had the year on the entry form and he crossed it off, crossed off that year and put like three years ahead. Okay. And he was like, I think this is something that like you should be aiming for. And so then, you know, I guess once I kind of, you know, got my head around that and I was very motivated, I'd say I was very self-motivated, but obviously that was another thing that just kind of pushed me. And then, so I was just working towards that. And then, you know, I started playing a lot of the amateur tournaments and, you know, I did, I did have some success there and um, yeah, just some, uh, some representative teams. And, you know, I I guess I just started ticking some things off that I'd, Really, Stephen, like he was the biggest mentor for me um, that I'd planned with him. Um, so then, do you think your relationship with Stephen was kind of like a, like a springboard into professional golf? Like you, how, how vital was um, Stephen in your life at that time? Yeah, massively, m- massively. Um, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have done it at all. I, I don't think so anyway. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I just think he... He told me one day that uh, I needed to like live and breathe golf. I needed to start because obviously, you know, thinking about, um, I don't know, not golf wasn't always my everything. And yeah, then, yeah. you know, and, and even still it wasn't when I was 18, 19, I just started to take it more seriously. But he kind of said I needed to, you know, he wanted me to start reading everything about golf, watching everything about golf. So, and I think, if you asked him, I probably took that to another level. Like, as in, I was like obsessed. Yeah. And I think that's, I, I became obsessed. And I think that's still with me now. Like people would, I think people that know me well would think I'm pretty, oh, I, I definitely love golf and I love everything about it. I love watching it. I love reading it. I love playing yeah. it. And, so you fell, um, you, fell, you fell in love with it really like a lot later than a lot of people. Like I, I remember as like a nine year old, I just love being out there beating your brothers in a chipping comp and stuff like that. Like, it sounds like you, you fell onto that later and that's kind of spurred your, you know, later in life uh, golf experience. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say, yes. Yeah. So I, w- I would say I've always loved sport in yeah. general, but not necessarily golf until, until later. Um, and I, I would say that's cause of Stephen, but yeah, because of some, you know, <laughs> when I started with him, you know, I got better quite quickly and that's very motivating, yep. you know, going out each round was better than the last one I had. I kept kind of breaking my handicap. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's very motivating. <laughs> yeah. T- t- ticking yeah. all the boxes and all that stuff. And then you're ready to t- turn professional. And um, you obviously turned professional. You were on tour for, uh, so I'm going to look at it. I think it was four, five, six years. Is that about right? I kind of, yeah, I was going to, uh, maybe, maybe seven. Yeah, so, something yeah, no, like that. No, that's... I, I was loosely looking at. I tried tried to do a little yeah. bit of research before bringing people on the show, so I'm not completely uh, blindsided <laughs> with uh, non facts. Yeah. But yeah, I think seven seven win nine wins as a professional. Um, had a that's a, that's a lot of wins in such a short amount of time. Uh, obviously, Vic Open, bit of a highlight there. A um, couple of European Tour events. Uh, you want to talk about what the jump was going from an amateur to a professional? Um, is it more kind of feeling comfortable out there for you or was it just kind of believing in yourself? I, I hear so many mixed, um, mixed emotions about that with people. They kind of, they're not sure what it is the jump or, you know, you, you obviously feel like you're better now, but what was it for you? Yeah, well, I think, um, so I went to Q school. I went to Q school twice. The first time that I went um, and I went as an amateur yep. and, and I think, um, you know, my opinion, but I think, you know, you have that option, you have the option to do that. So why not? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to go as an amateur just in case, not not just in case things don't go my way. You know, I don't think that's negative, but it's just, it's reality. You might have an off week, you might get sick, you might, you know. Yeah. So I I went as an amateur and I actually on, so there's six rounds, no, five rounds for final stage, I think. On the second last round, I took a 10. Okay. And I, I was done, sailing done like, like done that once in yeah, your was, life and it happened to be uh, on European tour a week. Perfect. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was kind of, I was cruising along, you know, in, in the mark for sure. And then, yeah, I take a 10. Anyway, I, uh, I ended up getting, I missed 
by I think it was two shots or something in the end. Yeah, and yeah. I got con- I got conditional status. Okay. So then I was like, oh, what do I, what do I do? You know, I di- I didn't want conditional status. That's not why I was going. No, nah, no one's going there for conditional. <laughs> so then, and the following year was a World Cup year, as well. Okay. World Amateur yeah. year. So you stayed stayed amateur. And- yeah, so I stayed amateur, and I yep. was like, "World Am was a guy. I hadn't rep- I hadn't played World Am before. Yeah, and and still, like, I hadn't won heaps in amateur golf. I was like, "There's definitely still things I w- would do." So I just decided, "All right, I'm staying am." And I had a great uh, 2010, I think, my last yep. year. Yep. Um, and yeah, got to represent Australia at World Am. That was yeah, awesome. Nice one to tick off. We played rubbish there, but anyway, tick off. <laughs> tick off. But you, I think uh, going back to, I think it was January, you won the Australian Amateur. Was that at Lake Karanup? Am I thinking? Oh, yes. Am I now? Yep. I look. I think that yeah, might have been my that job. might have been my first Australian Amateur. I think Jager won the yep. the men's. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'm all over it. He won the stroke play and the match play. That was yeah. Cool. He when he got hot, he got hot. That's kind of like the yeah. Jager thing. But yeah, so and you that's had when a... we played. Uh, I think we played Aussie stroke play and Aussie M together. Yeah, like it was like fifteen rounds or something. Like it. Was... Yeah, it was. It wasn't just thirty six holes. It was seventy two. No, nah, I think it was, was seventy two. Then into match play. That's and what it was I thought. Sixty four or something. It was like completely grueling stuff. But yeah, definitely yeah, the I best golfer that... one. <laughs> yeah, that's why uh, I think Jagers was more impressive because of that. Yeah, well, he he won. Yeah. I think he won the New Zealand Amateur that year as well. He he literally won everything. But again, we're not. Yeah. We, he's not on the show today. It's all about stakes. Yes, right out, right out. Um, we'll, yes, we'll so no, that going, was a, yeah. another nice one. You know, I think everyone. You know, you like to win the Aussie Am. You know, it's yeah. a nice one. A lot of yeah. prestige about it, and so it's yeah. yeah. I, I'm happy to have my name on that one. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. You did the world arms, didn't kind of just yep. tick the box, kind of, I showed yep. up, I got, I got my little badge, whatever. Yeah, I didn't do anything there. That was, yeah, didn't, very Didn't do anything. Actually, but, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of pressure. It's like the last Saturday in September when uh, the world's back in normal in Victoria, but it's kind of like that big pinnacle moment. It's tough to, it, it, it is what it is. You know, you just, just to be, there's a, a big experience. Um, but went to Q school after that, yep. I presume. And then you got, you didn't get conditional. Yep. You must've got full card. Correct. Correct. I did. Yeah. Um, I finished, I finished fourth at Q school that year. Perfect. And yeah. so, so then it was kind of, I didn't even have to sweat on the last nine holes really. It was kind of, it was, a, it was nice. Um, <laughs> Just make sure then, you sign your scorecard. That's about it. <laughs> correct. I was like, surely I can't stuff this up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then, and then we're kind of, I guess, away a little bit. Um, well, first, first step anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then went, went headed over to Europe then. And that's, um, well, I'd like to say, back then um it was you know the european tour ladies european tour was a really solid uh you know there was a great schedule some decent money to be played for as well whereas my last couple of years i probably i couldn't say that yeah um, did you, um, it hasn't been in a great place did you move over there or were you kind of going back and forth from victoria um I, well i mean the first couple of years honestly we i was away for like six seven months at a time yeah because there was yeah. so many tournaments and that but um, I had a, I had done the convenient thing and found an English boyfriend. Okay. So yeah, that yeah. <laughs> that um, that Just, that helps my now my now husband Brady though. Well, yeah, full that commitment. That doesn't sound yeah. that bad. Yeah. That doesn't sound bad. It's full commitment now. I'm married. Yeah. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No, we'd actually been seeing each other for like a year. I think like prior to that Q school. Oh, okay. So it wasn't good. totally random. It was actually. Um, yeah, I met him over there on an amateur trip where Golf Australia had actually organised for us to practice at a golf club, oh. and that was where he worked. So there you go. They, all, they take claim to the relationship. Yeah. It all it all falls into place. How good is that? How good yeah. That? So so really, um, in the weeks off and stuff, if there was only you know one or two weeks, we'd go and stay at his house, and he ended up caddying for me for Perfect. about five years. So. Well, Dan's it, um, he's a good golfer himself. Like Mac always tells me at Vic that he shoots his low sixties. He's a he's a keen golfer. He, he is, he is, he's, um, no, he's a very solid golfer. He's, uh, pretty impressive for someone who doesn't practice. Like he does, he plays a lot when he can, but, um, but he just, yeah, he loves it. Yeah. Good he on really him. He enjoys it. So yeah. good on him. So yeah, you're saying four, five, six years on seven years on tour, um, had a couple of wins in there. If you want to talk about some of your wins, um, what was it like? Um, I haven't won yet on tour. Why not? Lot as an amateur, but, um, I'm looking for that first professional win eventually when we can play events, but, 
yeah, winning winning any event, especially um, over overseas, is a big achievement. Um, what was the what was a couple of things you thought that really stood out for you that made you the winner that week? You know, you, you, I always like to think, uh, well, I drove it the best, I took the most chances, and I, you know, you kind of little things like that. It's like, yeah, yeah. I um, so my first win was the uh, the Spanish Open, and it was um, I'd probably put it in. Uh, probably down to having, I had like zero expectations that week. I'd had a, um, a little, a rough uh, incident, I would say uh, the week before okay. at the British Open where I signed an incorrect scorecard and no. was disqualified on the, on the no. Friday night. No. Yeah. So um, that one, it just, it ripped me apart. Like I, I've oh. never been so devastated about something like golf related. Like I was just, yeah, when I was gutted. I was devastated. When are they going to get that scorecard thing away? Obviously, we're in my score life now, where it's just you kind of just <laughs> tickle away on your phone and you, everyone's signed in. It's like it's all electronic. Let's just get on with it. I test, like, there has to be more of a, I don't know, it's old traditional ways, but far out. Like, there's enough yeah. people out there. You can't, you can't be doing that stuff. Like, you're even nearly yeah, unlucky it's, it's done by that. Yeah, it was, and it's even funnier because, well, funny i can laugh now but uh not at the time i even checked it like we had a walker scorer with us yeah. and i even checked i checked the score with the walker scorer oh. and she said she ticked it off but it was because the total was the same but two numbers were around the wrong way oh so, so it's even funnier i think i'm like oh geez like i i don't even know what made me check it with the walker scorer that's not something i'd usually even do and um oh. yeah and then so i i left the Scorers hut. I didn't know anything. I signed, and um, maybe ten minutes later, a rules official came and found me outside, and was like, and just simply said, um, "Stacy, just can you confirm that these that the scores are right or wrong?" And I'm like, "Oh no, nah, that's not right." And then she just goes, "Oh, well, you won't be required tomorrow." Oh. And I was like, "Oh, you could have put that a different way, maybe." But anyway, maybe. my fault. Scorecard's my responsibility, so. Um, Okay, so, then, yeah, yeah. so, so fr fr yeah. Friday night must have been rough, obviously, here in those nudes. Yeah, not good. How not did good. you, uh, <laughs> how'd you pull yourself together over the weekend and kind of get yourself geared up for next week? That's probably the question to be asked, I guess. Yeah, no, no, it's, uh, um, it's fine. I, um, yeah, I was really upset. Like, I was, I mean, I'll admit, I couldn't stop crying. Yeah. I was just like, this is just the one time you're actually are playing decent in a major. I was yeah. like, yeah. And yeah, I was just really, really upset. And I, I so we're going to Spain on, I think, Monday morning. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I was just down in the dumps. I didn't practice on the weekend. I didn't, which is unlike me. Yeah. And then, yeah, so and I was actually, I was staying with a couple of good friends of ours. Um, so they obviously, that, that helps, you know, to cheer things up and having yeah. Darren there as well. Um, and then... Uh, so then flew to Spain on Monday again, didn't, nah, I said, I'm not going to practice, uh, not into this, then got to the course on Tuesday. And one of my friends was like, come on Stace, this is ridiculous. Let's go play a few holes. So I played nine holes and that was it. And then I was just, I don't know, I was just a flat as attack, I guess. And, oh, and then, I heard, um, heard Darren, Darren Clark was similar when he won the, the, uh, won the open. He was like down in the dumps Monday, Tuesday, didn't want to be there and obviously something happened. He's like, I don't know why I'm here and then won the open. Like maybe that's, yeah. a, maybe that's a funny, secret. Isn't it? It's know. just, oh, well, I think, for, yeah. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, a couple of more days, you kind of, I was playing okay. It was nothing exciting, but I don't think nothing, like nothing bothered me. Nothing, yeah. you know, if I hit a Porsche, it, maybe it was just because I had no expectations. Like I didn't want to play at the start of the week. Mm. So, you know, I've got no expectations and I, I found that I was, you know, when I would make a mistake, I found it easy to bounce back or it just wasn't, I don't know, emotionally, I was just like flat, you know, so it didn't, didn't matter. And even, um, it's actually funny, Daz tells the story um, that when, so we got into a playoff yeah. and sorry, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around a bit here, but got, no, into that's a, right. uh, <laughs> got into a playoff and we got on the back of a cart to go back to 18. Yep. And I and I said to him, I'm like, oh, how cool is this? Even if I stuff it up, I'm going to come second. 
<laughs> and so I'm like, I don't know if any sports psychologist wants to hear that mindset, but um, uh, that was still my mindset at that point. I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm you still know? here. <laughs> yeah. So That's it was really kind of, I, I felt like it was an achievement when I made the cut. Well, after the so, week before, like that, that deflation, like even like, it's like when you, if you miss five, six cuts in a row, like just to, if you come 55th and you make the cut on the number the week after, it's like, I'm, 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 I'm on the up and up. I'm ready to go. Like, and so many times yeah. people kind of don't look at those results as like, it's like, nah, I broke the streak and I'm kind of, that's on my way. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm nearly there. You know, it's like yeah. that yeah. one putt on Friday, it's mean, makes all the difference. Yeah, massively. So yeah, that was, yeah, that was a huge win. Like, yeah, there was no better feeling than that. I can tell you. So what'd you do? One playoff hold, two, birdie the first. I uh, just, yeah, just, just one. Um, I actually, it was against Caroline Masson. Okay. Yeah. And um, she actually hit, it was a par five. She laid up that in a second shot was pretty much like a hosel and, oh. and there's water. And oh. I'm like, Oh, beauty. Just under my breath, you know? Um, so, but she goes the over there. Yeah, she goes over there and it's like in between rocks and she can play it. Like it's not, it's fine actually. Oh. And so she, yeah, she played it out to about um, like 10 feet. And, but I hit a wedge into, oh, it must have, it was, oh, oh, no, actually she must have been closer. Anyway, because I got the putt first anyway. Yeah. And um, yeah. So then, and then, um, just yeah, buried it and said, see you later. It's, it's my yeah, uh, trophy. It was, uh, Sorry for, thanks for coming. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. There was a lot of, uh, celebrations that night. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, first win there. Um, what was your, uh, so obviously did a few years and just kind of got over the professional life or was it just like the tour kind of going down a bit? What's, uh, what, what's the deal with uh, the European tour at the moment? So, like, I'll be honest, it's probably a combination of things. Like, so I did, yeah, I played a little bit on LPGA, but never full time. Like, I never kept, I did two years LPGA yep. where I had some status, but I never kept full status. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know whether I didn't give myself enough of a chance out there, like, you know, commit 100% to going to play Symmetra and just commit to this rather than I was going back and forth to Europe. I was so comfy, I guess, in Europe and I felt like I could do okay in Europe. So then I'm not, you know, I think I'm not backing myself enough to play on the LPGA. Well, but it's then similar in, lifestyles in Europe with Australians. That's very, there's not much of a jump. Like living in the US, I lived there for a while. It always feel, it's the same language, but it's, it's different. It's not, Yeah. I don't know, the culture, the culture shifts definitely a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, the LPGA, like, let's, let's admit, you know, it's a massive step up Yeah, and whether, whether I just wasn't good enough. So in the end, when I, um, when I decided that I wasn't going to go back to LPGA Q school, it felt like it had kind of popped a bit of a bubble in me. Mm. Like, as in, I don't know, it felt like I wasn't trying to be the best or the, uh, not settling in Europe, but I, I don't know. And so then, um, so that was at the start of, I think, like 2017 that I started thinking this way. Okay. And, and then at the, I think it was around maybe the middle of the year, um, the role at Golf Australia had come up. So, mm -hmm. and I'd kind of been thinking of other things, thinking of doing something else. I'm not sure. Like I've been to uni as well. So there's, I don't know, I'm always, I guess... I think I, you know, I could do other things as well. Like, a, yeah, um, that was my plan when I was 18, you know, I wanted to be a PE teacher. So it was like, yeah, it's yeah, not okay. like I've always been, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so then when this role had come up, I'm obviously thinking other things. And I think when you're not thinking, when you're not trying to be 110% into golf, then it's yeah. not a great combination. It's not, nah. it's not a great mix. And so, you know, I wasn't playing, I'm okay to admit, I was playing pretty rubbish. And there wasn't as many tournaments in Europe. I found I was coming back and forth. Yeah. My, my husband was back in Australia. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I'm just, it was probably everything all, all at once. Like it's not just one thing, um, but the combination. So then, you know, I kind of thought, all right, well, I'll apply for the job. It'll, it'll be good for me. I've never applied for a job before. Like it'll be good for me, but I won't get the job. So 
then I got offered the job and then I'm like, Oh shit. Okay. Um, yeah. So but, talk, I mean, talking about your transition into that GI role, like what's, uh, I had a look at the official title at some type of, uh, women pathway. I think, think that's kind yeah, of fe- female of... pathway manager is the official title. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, so probably, probably in a nutshell, you know, I sort of help or work within each of the state programs, helping on the female side of things. Um, yep. I guess you could say maybe a bit of a glorified mentor, but helping use use my experiences, my past experiences to help these girls, the, the top amateurs are, you know, around the country to mm-hmm. be, you know, either turning professional or reaching their, you know, full potential, whatever that, um, that may be. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an interesting one. Like I, I think about this a lot. Like there's not really a, obviously like a mentor pathway kind of someone that's been there, but a lot of these people coming through like um, men or women they want to turn into professional in their roles and what it's actually like. And if they need to um, learn that lesson themselves or have a bit of guidance on the way, it's, it's, it's tough to say what the right way to go about it. I think there should be a mentor in that position. And it's like how much other people need rather than others is it, it's, it's a tough balance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And a, a big part of my role actually now is helping out the, the rookie professionals. Yeah. Um, like the, you know, the girls that have actually turned professional as much as, yeah. yeah, like my role is with the amateurs as well, but you know, a big part of it is with the, the professionals trying to help them. Um, the girls that are within the golf Australia rookie program. So um, um, how many, know, everybody is. Yeah. So how many sorry, uh, people, sorry. sorry, how many, how many rookies do they have in the program at the moment? Uh, so there's four females. Yep that I'm work um, that sort of, that I'm work, I guess you'd say working with helping. Yep. I mean, everybody, um, you know, is, goes about things differently, goes about, you know, obviously their pathway very different, like, you know, either, well, currently the Japan, uh, Symmetra tour, uh, and ladies European tour, actually the girls are on right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, my role is very, very different every day. Um, you know, yeah. we, who I'm speaking with, who, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to find out about, give advice on, um, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's a, you know, I was in the program for like the Golf Australia rookie program for a year. It's a, it's a big jump. Um, there's I kind of wish there was more of a mentor myself in there. It's, it's, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting jump. I think you're in the, it's great that someone like yourself is, that's been on both sides of the fence. You've played being on the golf Australia program and now you're helping in that region. It's a, uh, it, it's great. They've got someone like yourself in there to kind of steer the, um, the future forward. It's a, it's an interesting time, especially now. It's weird. Yeah. And this is, I mean, it's even tougher, right. You know, with the situation right now, like some of the girls are like, they don't know when they're playing next, if they yeah. can travel, should they be booking things? Like how do we even get out of the country? Um, there's just so many different things. Uh, different situation scenarios going on right now. So, Hey, if I can help in a small way and make that a little bit easier for those girls, then Hey, that's great. Yeah. Cause I, I definitely think that golf Australia program has, you know, the, the bones of it's really, really great. I think what you're doing now is fantastic. Um, I think, uh, why well, I, I kind of prompted this conversation was um you sent me a few golf Australia questions before I'd been in the program before. And I, <laughs> I, I was like, perfect. I, you know, someone that's in there and I, I want to ask a, I'll kind of elaborate more on um, a couple of those questions. I answered them pretty well. I thought, um, yeah, just the advice of parents for golfers um, that want to turn professional. That was such an interesting question. I thought about it a lot. I was just like, it's a, it's not just the athlete. I think, you know, we've both been in our, it's family, like to like second, third cousins. It feels like it's like, it's a full unit. Um, and they have, a lot of them have no idea what they're signing themselves up for. It's such a, like, what's, I was just like, what, what's, what's your take on it? I think, um, what would you do differently? What would you tell the parents? It's like, you're obviously dealing with that now. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your, your answer or your response to that. Yeah, well, it, it is. And that's why I was, you know, I wanted, I wanted your, uh, your input on that. And I've been trying to get, you know, a lot of people that have been involved in, in the program yeah, or great. outside the program. Um, yeah their feedback on that. It's just, it's just feedback. And yeah, with the, I mean, with the parents and family and stuff, I think it's so important to have them as a part of the journey, yeah. like to get them involved, like right from the get go, 
you know, so they have some sort of understanding on what lies ahead. Not like, like, I mean, my parents had no clue. And so I couldn't really look to them for any sort of advice. They just yeah. kind of rolled with it. They rolled with whatever I said, which I don't know is a great, uh, a great idea. Sometimes there's, there's, uh, there's pros and cons to that. Cause you'll, but, you'll learn the lesson, but it's like, a, yeah. it might take a lot longer than if, you know, someone that's a little bit older, more experienced kind of adds yeah. a bit of insight into, you know, you know, son, you know, um, yeah, this is how it gets, should be done or like something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's right. Um, so I think it's so important. Like even, you know, some of these rookies and amateurs that I'm talking, communicating with all the time, like it's just as important for me to talk with their parents as well. Yeah. You know, I think that's a big part of it just so they understand what these guys are going through, what it's going to look like, whether, and even when it comes down to like the financial side of things, mm. so they know what, what lies ahead. I think that's always one of the big ones, one of the big shocks that the, the families or parents don't understand. Um, and it's, the loneliness side of things, I think that's, uh, that's massive. That the, yeah, the families can be a big part of that. Yeah, there's just so much. There's like management, you've got tax, you've got how am I going to fund this? How am I going to get to events? I haven't really booked anything before. Um, you know, these, these are questions and the parents are like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing it unless they, and then it's like some of them sign with the management company and it's like, is that the right one for you? Do they speak the same language? Are they always going to be there for you? Are they going to just take their cut and run? Like there's so many different things. And like, unless you've been in that position, you don't really know how to convey that to the athlete or the parent. And it's, it's, it's sad. Like we don't have, um, we need more mentoring in that position. It feels like um, obviously lessons should be learned from that as an athlete as well. And parent. so it's, it's a double edged sword. It's like, there's no right answer. Um, I think, I don't know. The, the, the thing is we're talking about it. That's probably a start, you know? Exactly. And that's even one of, was one of my ideas with getting those videos. That's yeah. like why I want to use that sort of thing as well. Like I want the, the, the players to be watching that, learn from that. Maybe the parents too, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I really do. Um, so we, yeah, I guess I'm trying like things like that to try and, um, try and help that side of things. <laughs> yeah. Especially like a lot of the athletes are in such develop developmental years of their lives, you know, teenagers, like young twenties. Uh, it's a, it's a big grown up decision to do all those things. Um, I think if you don't really know, you can, can't really identify who you are as a person, you sometimes get lost overseas, you know, going back and forth and all these things. And that's, yeah, it's just a big jump. There's no, there's no right answer. It's different for every different person. Um, it's a complex question, um, but it seems like you guys are ticking away, you know, just poking at the bear to try to get some answers out of it, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We are always, uh, always trying to improve, intru- improve everything. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, talking about improvement, uh, going from uh, Golf Australia's programs in its 15th year now, I think I was looking at it. Was it, is it, rookie programs 10 50 it's 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 a long time into yeah really? i was i was i was doing yeah. some cuz i was like i think the first one was i think rebecca flood um art, artist okay. now oh no i i yeah. would have no idea of those numbers yeah so I, <laughs> I, I, I i was looking into it i don't know why but i think it's it's nearly just over 10 years or something now what's uh, the biggest change you've seen from um the start of the program into now um, the things you've noticed that's different now in 2020. Yeah. Like with the program stuff and yeah, yeah, definitely. Like state programs and St- Golf Australia state, programs in yes, general. Yeah. Yep. State programs and how Golf Australia are um, influencing them and they're moving forward as amateurs turn into professional. Yeah. That's, um, that's quite a big question, but yeah, um, sorry. yeah I guess, uh, you know, I guess one of the biggest things that I see, and, and obviously it's very interesting, like, you know, I've been involved on the work side of things for the last couple of years, playing side of things, like from amateur days, then a bit of rookie. And yeah, so there's, yeah, obviously I've seen a, a lot of changes within, you know, so it's not so much national squad now. It's like the state programs are form like the Golf Australia High Performance Program, I guess. Yep. Which is purely like the state programs are purely like a value add program, we would say. You know, mm-hmm. I guess we want we want to just add to what the players are already doing. Like, okay, like seeing their coaches to, and all those things, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's we just want to like help with that or oversee that or be across that. Like we don't 
we don't necessarily, you know, we don't want somebody changing their coach because they get in the QAS or something. Yeah. We want to work, work with that service team, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been, yeah, I think that's a big thing, you know, and this, the state programs now, they're, I don't know, they're just a, I would say a hugely competitive environment. Like it's yeah. just a place where the HP players get together, you know, two, three times a week. So a lot of competitive training, a lot of, you know, a lot of matches, a lot of games that you can't get when you're just, I guess, practicing on your own. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say, does that, does that kind of make sense? Then? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of had a bit of experience with like the VIS and stuff like that. They, every week yeah. they're playing two, three times a week. They literally do everything together. There's a highly competitive side to that. Um, I think that was probably instrumental in, you know, the emergence of QAS stuff and like the whole golf Australia rookie stuff like the, cause a lot of those guys went on to make the team and they kind of, you know, competitive competitiveness, uh, breeds competitors. That's kind of how I've always seen it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I think, yeah, I think it's just getting more and more like that now. Um, and then within like say a rookie program, I guess some, uh, changes if we're talking changes developments over the yeah. time um we've got we've now got a uh, a role luke mackey who's a uh the well-being officer yeah um and he's based in the u.s now with a, a house mm -hmm. that um australian players can utilize as a base oh awesome that's so, really cool yeah, yeah which is something that um they've tried to get going for quite uh quite a while um and yeah, so Brad James has kind of been trying to get that happening for, for a long time and finally has the last couple of years. Um, obviously, it probably hasn't worked as we would have liked the last six months. Yeah. With no I'll golf on. No interstate <laughs> um, travel as well. So I don't see how you're getting out of the uh, country. So it's been rough. Yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal, isn't it? It's brutal. Um, yeah, yeah, so we're hoping that, um, you know, that going forward is going to be, you know, it's like somewhere, like I know Robin Choi last year, she didn't have a base over there at all was playing on LPGA and had limited status. So it was like, uh, I'm in, I'm not in, I'm not, you know, so she'd go and stay down um, the houses in yeah. Florida. She'd go stay there for a week. Oh, she got a call to get in a tournament. Then off she go kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think, um, you know, hopefully that works how we want it to. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's a great idea. And obviously yeah. uh, my role being introduced, I think is a big change on the on the female side of things yeah and then probably a, a big focus the last couple or probably the last 18 months to a couple of years where um we kind of have uh case managers of the rookie players so mm -hmm. i do that role for the female side of things it's just like a, a check-in we check in with the teams we we kind of across everything that that player is doing so there's someone uh like that in each of the states which is our um hp managers Okay. So like, um, so it's like a, year, a yearly thing or is it like a six month kind of check in, kind of see how you like go? The, like check in, but we, but we would be contacting them like very regularly, but we might have a, a meeting or something with all the team or, you know, like six months or 12 months for okay, sure. Cool. Yeah. But, but these like the case managers are, are talking to them like regularly, like, you know, as a friend would. Yeah, um, awesome. And we're finding the players are, I would, I think that they're really, uh, they're liking that. And I'd say finding that beneficial. Yeah. yeah I think, yeah, you're definitely, you definitely know from the players how they respond to kind of that, um, yeah. that nurture, I think it's called mentorship yeah. or whatever it is. And Absolutely. yeah, that's, that's obviously yeah. very, um, very, I don't know, rewarding for yourself when you see players kind of yeah. get that feedback. Yeah, d definitely. And you know, when, Hey, maybe you uh, don't need to call her for a couple of days. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you definitely, you definitely get that vibe as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's great. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. Really... So no, it's, I'd say we're seeing uh, lots of changes, and always, hey, we can always get better, and always developing, and always looking for new ideas. I guess. Yeah, great, fantastic. Um, and as your women uh, pathway role, what's uh, what's the biggest importance of golf moving forward in the future for you, and what's what's kind of your vision on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. A big part of, uh, you mean women, women in women golf, in golf and like, or my role or oh, your role in, uh, creating more pathways and like more like giving women more chance of golf moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously I think a big, a big part is, you know, we don't have the, the percentage of women playing golf right yeah. now either. 
So that is, that's a huge focus uh, again, not to get off track, but it's a huge focus yeah. for golf Australia yeah. um, to be trying to get more women and girls into the game. Not, not just in, not just at the grassroots level, but obviously we need them at the grassroots level so they can get to the high performance level as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I, I mean, I hope that I can play a big role in that and on the HP side of things, you know, creating role models so that these girls do take up the game, get into, you know, I'm hoping our, our media team is putting more females in the media so that that creates more role models. Um, yeah, definitely. We want more, more women coaches. Yep. So, um, you know, working with the ALPG and PGA um, in that space. Yep. Um, you know, there's it's just such a, I guess there's a huge, a huge gap there percentage wise. Yep. So we just don't have the numbers right now. So I think that's a, a huge focus. And, um, but that is, you know, we're putting a lot of energy into that at, uh, at Golf Australia. Yeah, that's so great. I'm, yeah. I'm excited for, uh, you know, yeah. well, I mean, look at, um, you know, Hannah Green, you know, so she's had oh. big wins last year. Major, major I'm, champion. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm hoping we see the, you know, the girls that are watching Hannah now obsessed with Hannah and that, you know, they're getting into the game now that we're going to see that in five, six, seven years. She's uh she's fantastic with a lot of the fans, especially going back home. She plays with a lot of juniors, you know, that interaction she's, kind of hasn't taken that stardom to her head to a sense. She's very down to earth. She'll always be that, that Hannah Green we remember as a junior. And that, that bodes so well for Australian women's golf moving forward. We need more Hannah Greens, you know, stuff like that. That's yeah. just, that's immense. So, that's so, so, so good. I mean, people wouldn't realise like, you know, half the stuff she's been doing at home during this, uh, this yeah. downtime, but it's just so impressive. It's like, she's just mature beyond her years. Like it's unbelievable. And, yeah. you know, I, th I think we're going to see that as like a game, the game of golf. I think we're going to reap the rewards of that. I really do. <laughs> no, I'm, ex I'm, I'm excited for um, whenever Victoria gets out of this lockdown. Um, every other state seems like they're doing a better job, but maybe we're having yeah. our wave, second wave now and something might not happen. Hopefully not. Hopefully we can get this stuff to a new normal um it's been really fun talking to you tonight stace uh i like to round it out with a question i kind of pre-warned you on this one but i don't some, <laughs> some guests i don't like to tell i just kind of just roll with it but yeah is there anything you ever wanted to ask about me about anything like that so just to throw a bit of flavor in there i don't know what um so you were world number one ranked amateur for a short period Sure period, do you yeah. think that <laughs> do you think that helped or hurt you uh i think it helped it definitely helped like i'm I'm not a kind of an accolade kind of person it wasn't a a goal on my mind if you know like me to be number one in the world as a like as a as a pro isn't it it wouldn't change anything for me mentally like i don't see it as something as like a it's just a it's a pedal stool that is rotating i've always seen it as that like something like that it's an accolade you can kind of add to your resume but it's not like a a big thing but it, it definitely helped my um i don't know it gave people in pro am something to talk about i guess i don't, I don't know <laughs> that's what it yeah. seems like Sponsor, yeah. what about sponsors or yeah it definitely helped me uh got me into a, a few pga tour events european tour events so it's it, it me it meant a lot more to a lot of people to say the you know the name dropping whatever it is i'm not that type of person but if you can add that on the end of your name, um, it was definitely helpful. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not the type of person like it, you know, it's just, it's a revolving pedal stool. That's kind of how I see it, but yeah, definitely helpful. Good got answer. Me, Good got, answer. Got me in a few events. Um, my mates love to stick it on me all the time. I was only there for, yep. I think one or two weeks. I think it was only eight, like eight or nine days, but <laughs> can't take can't take it away now it's uh it's on no the, that's right that's right i don't have yep. a trophy for it or anything maybe i'll get something laminated in a paper and i can kind of <laughs> roll from that grace will do that for you yeah yeah more than likely <laughs> and i'll sign it or something my cat will probably scratch it but don't so no one can take it away um yep. really fun stace uh i think you shed a lot of light on a lot of uh things that are just really important. Um, a lot of people don't talk about stuff like that. Thanks for taking the time to have a chat with me tonight. No worries. Thanks very much for having me on. No worries.